Now, let's figure out where we are in the electromagnetic spectrum. First off, here's the visible region. It's only a very tiny portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Within that, you have to go from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Red is the lowest energy. It is also the longest wavelength. Uh, and the lowest frequency. Visible color. So, and then within the visible region, we also have the highest energy for violet. Uh, and online, you'll see that this is in color. I apologize. Uh, highest uh, energy, uh, lowest wavelength, and highest frequency. And those kinds of trends uh, go beyond um, just the visible region as you go to higher and higher frequencies and higher and higher energies you'll go to ultraviolet, then X-ray, then gamma rays. In the other direction, you'll go to infrared, microwave, and radio waves, and here's our cell phone waves out here. Now, what do you have to know as far as the order of these and their energies? You have to know that infrared has longer wavelengths than red and is a lower energy. You have to know that ultraviolet is higher energy than violet, and you also have to know Roy G. Biv, as you go from red to orange to yellow down to violet, uh, the order of the energies and wavelengths. You don't have to know the exact numbers, just the order. Now, waves are known to interfere. If you've ever been in the tub or the ocean, you know that waves traveling in different directions, uh, or in even the same direction, can interfere with each other. When waves interact so that they add to make a larger wave, it is called constructive interference. And what we might imagine is that each of these is a wavelength uh, uh, of, a specific, that of a specific photon. So these are single photons. They just so happen to have their peaks at the same position and time. So their peaks are aligned. And the word for that, or another word for that, is in phase. And when they're in phase, they add together to make a wave that has twice as high a uh, amplitude. And we focus on wavelength and frequency for the properties of waves. However, the more waves you have together in phase, you're going to get higher amplitude and uh, let's say higher amplitude. And another way of saying that when you get enough is you get a brighter light. And that's constructive interference when the waves are in phase and they add. On the other hand, there is also destructive interference. That's when the waves are out of phase. Another way of saying that is that the peaks are not aligned. And in this case, the peak and the trough are perfectly aligned and they exactly cancel each other, leading to destructive interference and no wave. And this is an attempt to draw no wave. So you can have constructive interference, you can have destructive interference. And uh, next thing we need as far as wave-like properties of light is that when wa traveling waves encounter an obstacle, they diffract uh, through that obstacle. So if we have waves, and we can imagine since these are the wave crests or peaks, that our wave is going like this, and that the approximate uh, wavelength of the wave is uh, similar to the size of the slit or hole that uh, or opening that the light is going through. When that happens, you will have a diffracted wave and the diffractive wave uh, is bent around that hole. So that is uh, diffraction. 
and that is when you have a single opening or a single slit. Then you go to a double slit, so double slit. And you have a light source, and this works for water as well, water waves, but we're gonna focus now on light or any kind of electromagnetic radiation. As the waves go through two slits, you will have diffraction at each of those, and those waves, those diffracted waves, will then exactly constructively interfere and produce a bright spot. And destructively interfere and produce a dark spot. And these will alternate from uh, on a screen in which the light hits and you have a front view of dark light, dark light, and you can see what the waves are doing to create those spots. And uh, we will talk about this quite a bit for light, soon for electrons. And when we do, you will be asked to draw the results of this type of experiment on the screen. And what I'll be looking for when you draw an interference pattern, also called a diffraction pattern, is alternating areas of light and dark on the screen. So that's how you draw it on the homework, something like that anyway. And this is the and this is what waves do. Waves cause diffraction through a double slit to create a diffraction or interference pattern.